Hi everyone, thanks for coming to the last session. Uh, I'm Alan, I'm a site reliability engineer at Bloomberg. I don't run Cloud Foundry. I used to run it in a previous job, V1, uh, but now I'm a Hadoop engineer. Uh, today I'll be uh, talking about uh, uh, autoscaler and some uh, math behind it to develop some uh, intuition. This was originally uh, uh, a Kubernetes talk, it's a more of a personal uh, research uh, project of mine on uh, auto-scaling and auto-configuration uh, in general. So about me, I wrote some f a few books and courses in Docker two years ago, so they're very outdated now. Uh, that's just the way it is. Uh, and so let's, let's go to... Uh, are the distributed systems we run in general, like whether you're using Cloud Foundry or Kubernetes. So basically, you have an application and it has a certain number of instances in your server farm, it receives traffic, and then as it receives traffic to process requests, it consumes the CPU of that server farm, and then that CPU usage gets registered in your monitoring system, and then depending on the thresholds you set, the goals you set, let's say I want CPU to be less than 70%, you initiate an event, you page your operations person, they wake up at 2 a.m., they log into their Bosch jump box, and then they run CF scale. And then they go back to sleep. Okay. And then let's move to the air conditioner. So just from an overview, the architecture looks similar, right? So an air conditioner basically releases coolant to the environment. And, the, and then when, when the weather, uh, let's say the, the weather becomes hotter, like the sun rises, the, the temperature in the room decreases, uh, no, increases, yeah. And then the sensor in your air conditioner uh, gets uh, registered with that temperature. And then the thermostat uh, sets, compares the actual temperature with the temperature you set. And then since it's too high, it will uh, configure the coolant valve to release more coolant, thereby lowering the temperature. So the, the difference is, is that the air conditioner doesn't have uh, a temperature reliability engineer that gets woken up at 2 a.m. so that your room gets cooler, right? So you use, it's all automated in the thermostat. So we have this in most uh, cloud services, uh, Kubernetes and Cloud Foundry, they have you, so you have your CF autoscaler, so it's basically the same. You have your number of instances, uh, uh, and then it, uh, and then it, you, you get your C, CPU utilization from the, let's say, slash stats endpoint, and then uh, CF autoscaler or whatever you have. Well, CF autoscaler doesn't work that way, but uh, it gets, it compares the two, the actual value and then the target value, and then it adjusts the number of instances accordingly, according to your uh, rules uh, engine. So in a sense, it's similar to an air conditioner in that it's autonomous, uh, self-correcting, and uh, self-regulating. But we can learn from the math in an air conditioner that has been around for 100 plus years on what makes an effective autoscaler and how do you know if you need to override your autoscaler and step in and stop it, right? So the math behind an air conditioner uh, is called uh, control theory uh, and the textbook definition is uh, basically it shows how you can take advantage of the dynamics in the system. And by dynamics, we mean uh, how is the input related to the output. So in terms of our uh, application, the how is the input, the number of instances, affecting the CPU given a certain load. So control theory is also used in other areas in uh, automation, like your car's cruise control, your power adapter, and uh, ovens. And uh, we can use the dynamics of these and the math to develop the autoscaler, right? And uh, we can use the models as well to 
identify if we have a good autoscaler. So uh, the history of uh, control theory started uh, during the start of the Industrial Revolution. So this is a figure of what they call a centrifugal governor. It basically regulates the speed of a steam engine. So basically, your steam engine is connected to the flywheel, and then the flywheel turns, and then these uh, two uh, weights will go up. And when it goes up, uh, it adjusts the valve. So when your engine is too fast, the, the, the balls go up, and then the valve gets shut. So you have less steam in your steam engine, and it will slow down. So this made uh, the machines uh, reliable in terms of uh, performance. So these mechanization and optimization led to the Industrial Revolution and made things more efficient and had innovations like you can dig coal more efficiently and you can have trains with constant speed so you can have a proper uh, train schedule. So looking at the history, it actually took 100 years before uh, Maxwell uh, wrote a paper on how it works. So basically, in, during the start of the Industrial Revolution, for the next 100 years, people were basically cargo culting the centrifugal governor uh, technology. So in a sense, in the technology community, we're doing uh, much better. OK. So, so, it, so here's the textbook definition of uh, control theory. and. Basically, it's the same architecture as the autoscaler I showed earlier, but you can model it in the following. Uh, normally, a textbook, introductory textbook will show the three uh, components. So you have the target input or your reference value. So here it's R. So in, uh, in our autoscaler, that would be the target CPU utilization, let's say, within 70% uh, or something. And then you have the actual utilization, the output, called Y, and then you get the difference of that, and then you get the, the error. So based on that error, you put it in your autoscaler or your controller, and then it gives you uh, the input value U, which in our autoscaler is the number of instances. And then we use that number to run CF scale, basically. So uh, for our uh, application in an autoscaler, the fourth component uh, that we, you will add in uh, these systems is called a disturbance. So uh, web traffic is actually modeled as uh, noise. Basically, it's noise that changes your output, your CPU utilization, right? So here is uh, an example uh, uh, autoscaler. So basically, you have your sensor that gets your CPU utilization. And so that's your output. And then you put that in your controller, and you get the number of instances. And then uh, in control theory in uh, design uh, uh, textbook, they call it an actuator, basically the thing that runs uh, CF scale. And then I add some monitoring to graphite. And then I added uh, an interval on when to run the uh, autoscaling uh, loop. So here's the example output. So the green one is the number of instances, and the blue one is utilization. So if you double the traffic, utilization increases. And so the you, say, uh, the, you double the number of instances. And then when you have the traffic, you have the utilization. So you have the number of uh, instances. So uh, uh, this simple uh, autoscaler uh, uh, works because you can model the relationship of CPU and uh, your number of instances in a uh, linear model, but not all the time. But you can get a lot bang for the buck using a linear model. So with a linear model, uh, you can basically uh, model the dynamics as the relationship between the, uh, the input, U, and then the output, T. So U and Y, uh, U input and then output Y. So U and Y are like standard variables when you look at uh, textbooks. So first, you have your input U is dependent on your output. 
So your, uh, the number of instances is dependent on the CPU. And then here is the derivative of the CPU. So the change in uh, the CPU. So how fast or how uh, slow is it uh, changing in response to the environment. And then the next equation to model is the output. Uh, it's dependent on the previous output. So uh, you can see that the system has a memory effect. So the CPU utilization now is affected by the CPU utilization previously. And then it's also affected by the number of instances, which makes sense. So any uh, feedback uh, loop system in uh, control theory has these uh, four uh, desirable properties. Uh, I will explain the intuition uh, in a linear system and the math behind it in each of them. So first is uh, stability. Uh, so to begin explaining stability, I'll explain it starting with an unstable systems. Uh, so here, the dashed line is the, the target utilization. And then the, the solid line is the actual utilization. So here, we see that the CPU utilization is above the threshold. We add more instances, but then the utilization goes down too much. So we over-provisioned. So we go back to removing instances, but then we remove too much. So utilization spikes up again, and so on and so forth. You go to this back and forth uh, oscillation, and it never ends, basically. And then here's another uh, unstable uh, system. So in this case, no matter how many instances you put in your application, it just doesn't improve at all. So the problem is somewhere else, like your uh, storage or database or uh, network. And then here's another uh, unstable one, but it, it goes back and forth, but it doesn't explode, but it's still uh, just as bad. So a stable system is the, a system that settles to the target value. So in this case, our system should uh, converge to the target uh, CPU utilization. So here, we're still doing uh, over-provisioning and under-provisioning, but at some point, we, we get it right. And uh, this is the uh, behavior that you typically want uh, in your system. You gradually add instances, and then the performance gradually uh, improve. And then the obvi another obvious uh, property you want in your autoscaler is the accuracy. How well uh, within the bounds are you reaching your uh, target? And then uh, if you reach your target, it also matters how fast you reach your target. So you can think of it like in operations, the mean time to uh, recovery. So depending on your business case, you may be able to afford to uh, scale, uh, scale out uh, slower. But in case you uh, want to uh, recover faster, you can uh, explicitly uh, design an overshoot where you over-provision at first, but then you gradually uh, settle down to your value. So that's when you want uh, Overcorrection, so it's a design uh, trade-off. So, uh, building a simple controller. So, going back to this uh, architecture, and we know what makes a good controller. Uh, we can uh, use a few uh, 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 controllers with the linear model. So, we will design basically the component C here. So the first one is a proportional control. Basically, the difference between the, you take the difference between the actual CPU usage and your target usage and just multiply it by a certain number. And then that would be your number of instances. So this control is inherently uh, inaccurate because you're just multiplying by a, uh, a dumb constant. And the higher your uh, factor, 
the longer it takes for your system to uh, settle down and you'll have a lot of overshoots. So to improve the accuracy, you, uh, you try to average your uh, errors over time. So you use some form of uh, integral control. So basically, an integral basically takes the previous state and then adds the, a factor of the error. So you can also write this recursive equation as an integral and you'll get the same thing. But then uh, an integral controller takes uh, much time to uh, settle down. So uh, you, you can add uh, a controller part where you use the derivative or the rate of change to make it more uh, sensitive. But since you're more sensitive, you're also more sensitive to uh, noise in the system. So typically in practice, people combine the integral and the derivative part to have a smooth behavior, but, uh, but have the system respond in a timely manner. So uh, even though these uh, linear models are useful, uh, it's important to note that uh, our systems are not linear. There's like a, a serial component in our uh, applications. There's communication overhead between other dependencies like database or other microservices. So here uh, I just showed that even though there's a linear relation, sort of linear relationship between the utilization and number of instances, there's still uh, non-linear components that can be attributed to like startup time or uh, warm-up time and other uh, overhead in the system. So control theory can uh, is not only applicable to autoscalers, but to anything you want to be auto-tuned and auto-configured. For example, you want to get the uh, set your applications, keep alive timeouts, let's say in Nginx, and uh, see how it affects the response time, or your number of connections and your memory in your uh, machine. So the nice thing about uh, linear models is that you can combine these variables, and instead of having just a line showing the relationship between uh, one input and one output, you can do multiple inputs and multiple outputs, so you'll have either a plane or a 3D blob of n-dimensional linear models. But you can start at a small scale. So uh, in summary, uh, control theory uh, allows us to have an architecture of a self-regulating system, which basically uh, iterates on uh, feedback. And since we're using uh, linear models that can go a long way, uh, the math uh, behind it can show us what is an effective feedback mechanism. But then in the end, our models are not uh, completely uh, nonlinear because they represent the real world. So it's, it's important to reevaluate your models. So. Uh, if you want to get started on how uh, it works, uh, the O'Reilly book on the right is uh, a good uh, introduction. It has Python code that uh, simulates uh, like a real uh, distribute, simulates distributed systems and then you can play with it. And then the, the other one on the left is made by some researchers in IBM many years ago and they do uh, real case studies of like auto configuring Apache and other things. Uh, and uh, I have a demo. So, so here I have the example Node.js app in CF. Uh, I, I add a uh, square root call several times to make it slow so that we can see the changes. And then I will show the different components in, uh, in a control theory feedback loop setup 
in making an autoscaler. So first is the sensor, which basically does CF curl in the stats endpoint, and I get the average. And then I have the actuator, which basically runs CF scale, so it's pretty hackish. And then the meat is in the controller, the one I showed uh, earlier. And here I'm using a plain uh, a proportional controller. So the integral part is zero. So basically I multiply the, a, a random factor with the difference in utilization. So I have it running here, okay? And I send the metrics to uh, stack driver. So here we have the number of instances here. Uh, so it's auto scaling between 20 and 21. And then the CPU average is hovering around 10%. And I'm generating 1,000 QPS of uh, load. Uh, so here's my load generator in uh, Kubernetes, which is just one, lo one load generator, and then so I'll, I'll try to quadruple the traffic. So just refresh until everything is running. Okay. And then we can refresh it. Yep, so you see the CPU is starting to uh, pick up and then the autoscaler is starting to add instances already. You can refresh the graph. Anyway. So let's wait until the metrics get loaded in. Uh, I forgot to show earlier that, like to show my sleeves are empty. Uh, so I have a plain uh, CF deployment. I don't have CF autoscaler uh, deployed. So I'm, I'm just using this simple autoscaling uh, shell script. OK, so the CPU, uh, it already added, and then the CPU increase, uh, I think. Uh, the stack driver load balancer is a bit delayed, but we can wait a bit. Uh, in the meantime, uh, we, I can answer some questions if anyone of you have. Yes? Did you have this code in the repo somewhere where I could go and... Ah, yes. So the a question was if I have a repo for the code. So it's in my uh, personal GitHub page and slash... Uh, control theory, okay. And we're looking for SREs in Bloomberg if anyone's in interested. So, yeah, so I, I got that out now. So let's go back here. Okay, yeah, so the traffic increased and it shows that I added instances so I can scale it back now so that we can see that we're responding to a spike. Yeah, so after a while it will go down. So, yep, that's uh, it. Any more questions? Thank you.